All right. Um, I'm not going to make this too long because that's simply uh, it's not my team. I don't have the Miami jersey on, but it's not my team. Um, probably like my, you know, everybody has like that kind of like backup on call program. And kind of like, okay, well, if, if things went wrong with my, my top girl, I'd probably hit you up next. That, that'd probably be Miami. But when you see games like this, you kind of think to yourself like, yeah, maybe I should find a better backup, you know. <laughs> I don't know if this is the one. Um, but anyway, like, this isn't about Miami specifically. I mean, indirectly. But this is what, um, you know, I'm an Auburn fan. So it's this thing where Crystal Ball was our lead candidate for a while in the 2021 coaching cycle. Um, and it fell through because I, the, the, I think the power brokers didn't really um, – I forgot the reason why I fell through, but there was like some, with Auburn, of course, some incestuous dynamic bullshit that just fell through. But basically, Crystal Ball's the guy we wanted first in that cycle, and then we kind of move on other dudes. Um, and when people were like, oh my God, I love Crystal Ball, the, the coaching pedigree, uh, the the Oregon top five, top 10, in and out, um, offensive line dominance, which, you know, he all those things are, if you just look at them on the plainest tense, just like, Blind eye tested, yes, Oregon was top, I think, five or something like that. I think at some point, and I want to say the 2020 year, I want to say. Um, Justin Herbert, NFL product, offensive lines were talented on paper. Um, all these things that were high accolades for him. I mean, he built up, you know, a, um, a FIU program. I believe FIU. Um, one of the Miami or lower Florida teams. You know, he did his thing, right? Like on, you know, on so many different levels. But that's why the blind eye test is not good. Uh, the blind eye test does not take into account context. And uh, this is the same thing I say about Tommy Tuberville, which I'm not going to go too deep into Tommy Tuberville. Nobody gives a shit about him. At least I hope you don't. Even if you're an Auburn fan, I hope you don't give a shit about him. Um, he had a ton of these type losses where you'd be top seven, uh, you know, and be top eight preseason, you know, something very high, not like national contender level, but fringe national contender. And you go out there, you have a couple good wins. You get up to top five, top four. Then you lose to unranked Arkansas, get your ass kicked by Derek McFadden. Um, I'm not going to like pretend like I, I wasn't like sentient really when those games occurred. But the, the point being like, he has so many of those type games where like you're a big, massive favorite and I always used to think of him, like, looking back at his games, like, he was little game tubs. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound as good as big game stoops or whatever, but in the little games, he was, it, pretty much every year, it was going to be a loss, more likely, uh, more than likely. When you look at our, our guy here, Cristobal, I mean, he ran with that and just ran off the plug with it. I mean, he's, outside of Gus, who I think might be, as far as, like, talent versus production i think he might be the worst coach of the last like 10 years i, I love gus you know his tenure at auburn for the most part but um I, he just we were a top 10 program in talent every year uh this was half his tenures before georgia became georgia like uh, well this version like fucking predominant georgia um i mean rick was good but it wasn't this um and he just, like, gave you 8-4 and four every year. I don't care about the context of playing Alabama and Georgia and LSU and A&M. He just – talent versus – expect or talent and expectations versus result. Biggest gap out of any coach in his time at Auburn. And Crystal Ball has taken that mantle and just ran with it. Um, he is worse than Gus in situational football and uh, preparing high level of talent against – Low level of talent. I mean, Auburn had losses against uh, first year Kirby Smart with Jacob Eason, first year Jacob Eason, um, as a top nine team that basically had a B line to Atlanta. They were ten and two. They had one loss at Clemson. So they only had one conference loss. Uh, and all I had to do was beat Alabama to basically make the SEC championship and maybe the playoffs. And then they lost to uh, twenty sixteen Georgia because. They started a quarterback that had one working arm. I'm not joking. Look up 2016 Georgia against Auburn and look up Sean White going into that game. 
their quarterback had one functioning arm. They lost 13 and six or 13 to seven. And seven of the points from Georgia came because the one arm quarterback threw a pick six. So Georgia scored six points on offense. Auburn scored seven. And they lost because you get it. So Crystal Ball has games like that. You know, the Bethune Cookman embarrassment. Um, there's some Oregon games against some, you know, some unranked teams that were just horrible. Um, the playoff, the, the not playoff, the Pac-12 championship season, the last one they won, I believe that was 2020. Um, really embarrassing loss somewhere. I'm going to look it up while I'm doing this. And then you have, you know, I, I think you pretty much felt like you got past that with um, the A&M game, which, I mean, I would contend, like, that game was probably a bit gassed. Like, I, I still don't know if the coverage for that game, I, I think it was anybody else owned that that game would have been gassed that much. Like, I know it was a big stage. A&M had more talent. I believe A&M was ranked in that game. Miami was not. I believe A&M was 20th, I believe. Like, I, I get it, right? Like, I mean... <sighs> On paper, I get it. Like, it was the, probably the biggest win they had since the Notre Dame game in 2017. I mean, it's got to be a game between. There's some Florida State wins that were pretty big. So, I mean, some of the Florida State wins, there were no really other, like, relevant games I can think of talking about head other than the Florida State games. But, you know, there's, there's definitely at least one game. But, like, as far as the platform and kind of what that game was supposed to be in terms of turning around the program, that might have been the biggest one since the Notre Dame game in 2017. Um, and I just didn't I didn't think – because, I mean, like, we, we saw – we looked at this and said to ourselves, like, A&M might be – it was 2019 when they lost to us. Bo Nitz, they lost to a, fr- a true freshman, Bo Nitz, um, as the more talented team, as the better team. Um, and they went out there and lost on a last second, or I think it might have been some time left, but almost almost last second. Uh, just chuck up to fucking Seth Williams. Um, yeah, that was that. And then they went out there and lost to unranked Arizona State by three. And that was the last loss they had. But that was a team that could have still made the playoffs even after losing to Auburn, who was number 16, so not that bad a loss. But could have still went out there and made the playoffs. They, won, they were sixth in that game, and they lost that one and then had a chance to be a top five Utah, the Pac-12 championship. Did it, but unfortunately did not go to the playoffs that year. Um, that was the year where LSU fucking t- tore everybody to shreds when it mattered. But the point being, dude, there is nobody that I think is worse as a big game head coach. Or a little game head coach than Mario Cristobal. I, big game status? I don't know. I mean, he's not that bad, I think, in the grand scheme of things in terms of like the, you know, big ranked against ranked games. I know, I know I just say he lost a Bo Nitz, but... Um, there's worse people than him in the big games, but the little ones, the like, we can see our path to where we want to go. It's starting to clear up, and then you just like lose to like Bethune. Not not Beth, that 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 year was pretty bad overall. The Bethune Cookman loss was just significantly bad, but it's just like the you can almost feel like some light coming in, and then he just like loses a shitty ass game. In the 2020 season, they went five and three, um, coming off of 2019. Which not good. They were very talented in twenty twenty as well. I'm not sure they went five and three, but <laughs> fucking uh, Mario Cristobal. Um, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I guess I'll end it here. I, I just think that this is supposed to be for Auburn fans primarily. Um, hiring Cristobal was a you had to ignore a series of red flags. I think the really hot girl that like has basically a new. Uh, boyfriend like every other week and like it's routinely like shit talking men on Instagram and like it's like a story men are the worst and like the next story is like her like plugged up with a different dude that's like Miami f- or that's the crystal ball rather that's crystal ball's like entire background so it's like she's incredibly hot like everything just nine out of nine or nine out of ten just one point missing the one point is like the biggest point you kind of want like decent like personality or like won't kill you when like you're sweet but that that's what that like crazy latina girl that's like fine as shit that like has 
a um, felony in her future from, like, killing her boyfriend in the sleep because she found out he was cheating. That's, like, Mario Cristobal. You're going to, like, be fine, man. You're going to, like, probably still win, like, nine-plus games. But you might, like, com explode one of these years. Like, you might just lose a Florida State by 60 one of these games, and that just might happen. You might lose a Clemson, even the worst Clemson game, the worst Clemson team we've seen in the last 12 years. You might get your ass kicked in that game. It's, it's full well possible. I'm just saying that right now. It's full well possible. <laughs>